Today I'm showing you how to transform the McFarlane White Knight Batman and Batcycle based on the XM Studios White Knight statue. There already is a Batman White Knight with the regular black and grey suit, so you could make your life easier when you just buy that version. However, I got this red version for only 10 bucks, so I went with that. Now let's start to modify Batman. In order to get him to look like a figure, you could also simply buy it right from the shelf. I started with a modification to the cape, which is glued to the back with a key. I wanted to have the cape flying in the wind, since he's riding the bike later, so I needed to cut away that key. I initially thought I have to make a custom cape, but then I had a way easier idea. But before we do that, I bought a new color for this custom collectible, which is Vallejo's premium black paint that was developed for RC car bodies and therefore is much more flexible than your usual acrylic color. Which you can see here, it doesn't crack. Okay, back to the cape. I simply drilled a hole, or actually two because the first one was too high, into the back and stuck a metal rod into the hole that I had laying around. The idea here was to super glue the rod to the cape and by painting it black with the cape making it disappear. That actually worked pretty good and with that all the body modifications were already done. Then I started to paint the suit with stonewall grey and all the black parts of the suit with the premium black. If you liked the video please hit the thumbs up button, click subscribe and hit that bell icon to be notified when my next video comes out. And here you can see or you cannot see how the metal rod disappears after painting it. I also drilled a hole into the hand to make him hold the batarang rope from which I removed the middle part. Once I was satisfied with the black and grey part of the suit, I painted the belt with khaki. And lastly, base coated the buttons and the knife with black before hitting them with silver. Then I took game color earth and dry brushed a bit of dirt to the cape and boots. And with that my Batman almost looked like this one. And we can jump over to the bat cycle. Disassembling it was pretty easy, you just need to get rid of a few screws and then it basically falls apart. But before that I used the soldering iron to create a few bullet holes and battle scratches. Just make sure to use a respirator when you do that. Then I used Tamiya Putty to get rid of the seam line of the middle part of the bed cycle and painted it with the premium black after sanding. Then I took the same black to paint all the other parts. Next I masked off the tires and painted the rims and brakes with silver. After unmasking the front axle I had the problem that this part was made out of a plastic that even this paint doesn't grab onto. You could literally peel away all of it, which I then had to do. Then I sanded the part a bit, used plastic primer and after that the paint was holding on enough. However I would probably not stick crepe tape or masking tape to this part nonetheless. Then I already started the detailing by painting the inner part of the brake disc with black followed by glorious gold for the details. For the exhaust I mixed silver with a bit of tinny tin. Then I super glued the mechanism that lets the bat cycle extend its wheelbase so that the painted parts aren't getting scratched by it. Afterwards I took gunmetal to paint the motor parts. Then it was time to paint the seat with leather brown as a base color and then beastie brown as a wash and to add some texture. After cleaning up with black it was already time to start putting everything back together. Machine guns don't work without a hole in the gun barrel, so let's quickly change that as well. Then I painted the whole thing with green stuffs, max matte and the seat with satin varnish. 
Next, I mix a bit of Milliput to fill all the screw holes. And here you can see that the Max Matte Varnish has created a lot of spots that kind of look like water spotting. So after sanding the Milliput filled screw holes, I went over everything again with black and left away the varnish. After that, I superglued the rear axle back in place. With gunmetal, I painted the machine guns and with silver, the bullet holes, scratches, rivets and some other small details. To tone the silver down, I went over everything with a black wash, which is just black paint with a lot of water. With Game Color Earth, I created a few dirt splatters. And with Mud Brown, I airbrushed along the underbody as well as the wheels and everywhere else mud and dirt would accumulate. For a very subtle color variation, I mixed the black with light gray to paint the tires in the end. And then the bed cycle paint job was finished as well. The last touch up was to print a few displays that I stole from an image of the XM Studios statue and glued them to the dashboard with PVA. Now let's build the base. I started with a dense foam that I cut into shape with a box cutter. Two extra stripes will serve as the walls. And then I wanted to have the street at an angle, so I had to cut along the whole base, which was a pain. I additionally glued a thinner piece at the bottom of the base to have an even surface at the bottom. Then I cut it out a larger piece that will serve as a bridge pillar and glued everything together with hot glue. One more piece to finish the pillar and then I used crumbled aluminium foil to give the foam some texture. Then I cut it out a brick template and traced its shape all around the walls and cut out individual bricks with the box cutter. With a wood spatula that I have broken in half, I enlarged the gaps. Since the top part of the pillar had a pretty rough texture, I used the texture paste that I have created for my Silver Surfer video. If you haven't seen that, check it out after this one. And then I painted the bottom of the base with black, followed by a mix of black, white, red and yellow for the upper part. And then I went over to Thingiverse and searched for a Gotham manhole, which I actually found and printed it out with my FDM printer. You can find a link to the file in the description. No post-processing, I just painted it black and then with Tinny Tin and a black wash to finish it up. Then I dug a fitting manhole hole into the street. When everything had a base coat of grey, I mixed together black, white, yellow and red in different amounts and painted individual bricks with it. When that was done, I thought a gargoyle on top of the pillar would look better than this tiny roof, so I went to Thingiverse again and printed this little guy. Shout out and thanks to the creators of these files who make them available for all of us. With an old brush and wood filler, I got rid of the printing lines. I did have to repeat the step two times until all the lines were gone though. Then I painted the street a couple of times since I was never satisfied with how the color turned out. But eventually I got it right. Then I cut out another two strips of foam to give the bricks a roof, which I painted grey as well. A final dry brush of a lighter grey tone for the gargoyle and then it was time to glue him to the pillar. And the manhole hole was plucked as well. 
and then the whole base got a wash of water down black. And with the wood filler I also filled the gap between the gargoyle and the pillar. I then used yellow olive to weather the side of the streets where dirt would pile up. To create the effect of plaster between the bricks I mixed together water with PVA glue and alcohol. Then I used fine sand and let that sink into the crevices and fix it in place with the gluey water. I airbrushed a skid mark from Batman's U-turn onto the street and then I used a few green bits and pieces to further weather the border of the road. I also used alcohol here to break the tension and then the water PVA mix to fix it in place. Some final weathering with earth color, black and water and then I called it good. <laughs> 